<laughs> and then they're like, okay, Test you. I, I can hit trust you with you a more. tortilla wrap. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I've been hit several times from you. Oh, no. So I don't know. Um, yeah. So they say, was it mockery and other things? That's when you start building relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Every country I've been to India, Zambia, Germany, other places, that's part of somehow quickly they make your fun relationship of me. building. Yeah, somehow they make fun of me. I don't know, <laughs> but I know easy. that I've made it in when they start making fun of me. So. You're like, I've made it. Yes. Yes. So today's episode is a, another interview um, with a FBC member since they were a young baby. Um, his name is Jarrett, and he's an associate pastor here. And we're going to get into some conversations about missionary work, what discipleship is like, and how we do that in our day-to-day life and all across the world. Welcome to the 3D Disciples Podcast, where we're working together to develop disciples who display God's love as we deploy into God's world. Join us on this journey by liking, subscribing, and following this channel. I'm your host, Hannah, and alongside us is the pastor of FBC Clarion, Jason Hunter. May Jesus help us climb to new heights. Welcome, Jarrett, to the 3D Podcast. You are, what's your job here at FBC? Well, First Baptist. Thank you Clarion. for having me, first of all. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. <laughs> uh, my role is actually I'm the assistant or associate pastor here, mm-hmm. and I work with youth and families as well. So that's kind of my main role. Nice. So. And I remember when you came on, actually, what was that, like three years ago? It was uh, three, yeah, going on four years in October. Yeah, so nice. The next, this year. So the first question I have is just how long have you been at FBC? Because that wasn't your first journey here. That's a trick question. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I grew up in this church. Mm-hmm. So this is a church I grew up um, through college. I went I went to Clarion University, so I still attended here in Clarion University. Mm-hmm. And then I moved to several places. Well, actually, I was interim youth person, one of the interims oh. uh, for the youth group. Uh, right after college for about a year or so before mm-hmm. they brought another person in. And then um, I moved to West Virginia and then <coughs> I moved to other places, um, North Carolina and elsewhere mm-hmm. um, in central PA. So I've been in and out of this church actually all my all my years. Like, were you a baby coming here? A yeah, my, my parents. You yeah. used to bring you here? Yep, this is my was parents' it? church. I've been going here for over 50 years. So. No way. Yeah. I so. did not know that. So yep. you played in the little nursery over there then, too, probably? If that was still... <laughs> if I it was the nursery. Well, parts of it, yeah. And then the parsonage burnt down, and then they built this other section on. Oh. That was in the 80s. So, you yeah. know those old photos we have in the back in the library? Yeah. yeah back He's there. in one of yeah. those. Yeah. I was up here. Were in you the, in, like, a dress? Are you that old? <laughs> Where the boys used to wear dresses? I was dresses. wearing 70s, my, my okay. hand-me-downs of my cousins. Yeah. So it's a like a mustard turtleneck oh, and yeah. plaid pants. What yeah. I imagine, a 70s. Yeah, so I was there. I was a, Shockingly, I was a shy boy with my hands in my pockets and turned to the <laughs> side. So I didn't want to be singing. Yes. <laughs> Would it almost be safe to say that like some of the youth that you worked with during the interim time are like not youth now? They're full They're adults. adults. <laughs> and actually, how old I am is... <laughs> Some of their children I am actually working with. Yeah, now. I'm working with now. So. <laughs> Just on that note, Jared's That's old. That's wild. <laughs> yes, I'm old. <laughs> All right. So we started this 3D journey at the church. It's been, whoa, a year. Yep, coming yeah. Coming up on the year anniversary. Coming up on a year during this recording anyway. Um, so have you noticed any changes in the members or the church as a whole since we've started this journey yeah, I mean, I believe there's there's a definitely a different focus of the church. I think mm-hmm. it's a, a better focus on taking time uh, to grow in God's word, but also bringing other people along. Mm-hmm. And um, if you want to say called discipling them or just sharing what they've been learning through God's word. So I think it's been a definitely a good, positive influence. I just keep on forgetting my book every Sunday. But other than that, <laughs> um, I think it's a big, a good influence and a good spot to just take and I was even using it for one of my um groups of adults we were meeting together mm-hmm. um and we were using the sermons um and then talking about that and just adding and deciphering trying to figure out what to do about the scripture we learned and mm-hmm. the topics so yeah yeah I mean you're not the only guest that probably has nothing to do with 3d at all but just listens to the podcast so like everyone kind of like 
I don't know, just picks apart what works for them. And I think the Spirit's just guiding them in the direction they need to be or go or use whatever part of that vision yeah. is a part of it. Yeah, it's kind of broad. There's a lot of tools and kind of figure out what part works best for you and how to use it the best. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so what's your life like currently as a youth pastor? <laughs> um, it's kind of like the overseer, I would say. Okay. I have other youth uh, leaders that are, uh, they play well as a team, let's say. We work well together as a team mm -hmm. and uh, kind of somebody leads the game, somebody does kind of just taking care of the message. Usually it's me, but in general, they, they have their input mm -hmm. and they, they are willing to help in whatever fashion. And I just have to oversee it, make sure we set up times or if there's some issue going on that I take care of that. But in general, my, my youth leaders are very good at working together with mm -hmm. me. So that's a, that's a positive. I've had other youth groups where that's not been the case. Where you're just like kind of solo. Solo or I've been struggling like the youth leader. Other youth leaders were kind of against me. So, <laughs> Great. Which doesn't make it easy when you're trying to do ministry. So yeah. um, I've had that. I've had both. So I always like to have uh, yeah. more positive influence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In That's kind life. of funny because that reminds me of when we had Scott on and we asked him about what was his life like as a campus minister. And he said his roles kind of shifted into kind of being more of encouraging mm -hmm. his people who are tending towards leadership to start taking more leadership roles and and I don't know, I kind of see it more as like this 3D journey that we're on too, where we're working together. We're like, we're just disciples building disciples. So not only are you building the youth, perhaps you might be building those youth leaders too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? All right. So um, page 114 of the manual, if you would ever have it. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even gotten to this far in the manual yet. Uh oh. Um, it just defines deploy because this is one of our 3Ds. So okay. I'm just going to read it. Um, it is to arrange in a position of readiness or to move strategically or appropriately to spread out strategically or in an extended front or line. So I was bringing that into, we haven't discussed yet. We're a couple of minutes in to your missionary life. Okay. So you were talking about how you've moved around a lot. Um, what prompted you to join the missionary field? <laughs> that could be well, a loaded question. The first sentence or the first statement would be uh, God. Yeah. Uh, he, he kind of. Yeah, that's like. He just how did you end up here in Pennsylvania, Pastor Jason? Um, <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. But that is a really cool answer if you think about people who aren't Christian at all. They're like, why would something like that mm -hmm. force you to well, do these huge things? If you know yeah. where I'm from, um, mm -hmm. those people that know this area, I came from a little town called Marionville or a village. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very small and. I was there. I loved it. My parents still live there, but I was never meant. I always knew at the age when I was younger, I, I knew I wasn't never going to live there again, contrary to my mother's belief. Um, <laughs> and sadness. Yeah, and sadness. <laughs> but uh, to be honest with you, when I was probably 16, 17, 18, roughly around that time, there would be always missionaries coming to the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, as they were sharing their stories of definitely going into the jungle and, you know, flying the airplanes in and doing all those things that missionaries did back then. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, that is what I want to do. I want to go overseas. I don't know where. Um, and God put on my heart two things. I want to be overseas as a missionary someday and also work with youth. I already knew at 16, 17 or 18, whatever, it is a little blurry. But uh, <laughs> at that time in my life, God really said, uh, not verbally, but just through circumstances and everything that um, I was meant to work with youth, and I was going to go on a mission whenever that would be. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's kind of how it started. It would happen here in this church. So. Yeah. I wonder if we've had any missionaries that have, like, inspired our upcoming youth. Have you had any youth mention that they're interested in missionary work? I'm always strongly encouraging them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and actually Tell we, them more jungle and, stories. And actually, we have rec yeah, very recently. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. oh, one, yeah. The, one of our seniors is getting ready, so... We took a mission trip to Philadelphia mm -hmm. um, a, back in August, um, yeah, and so time. Scott, our campus <clears throat> minister, took four from his uh, campus from yeah. the university. Um, Jarrett took four, three or four? At least three. I mean, four. There was four. Four, yeah, four, was four from the youth group, and then mm -hmm. I took about uh, five or six others from the, from the adult church. And we all went on a mission trip together. So we had like 15 of us all together and, you know, representing the different age groups. And uh, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a great trip. 
um, to Philly, but uh, one of our youth came back, and he is graduating this year, and he is getting ready to go uh, join an organization called World Race. Um, and so he is going to take a gap year between graduating and either military or college, whichever comes after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to spend nine months traveling the world. He's Nepal. At least four countries, yeah. Nepal, Nicaragua, Estuani, which is in South, South Africa. Africa. And I can't remember, India? Some uh, Nepal, think, or like Nepal is around Nepal, India, so. So, but yeah, so there's four. There's at least Whoa, four. I didn't four know countries, any of this. Yeah, that he's mm. going to be going from August of 2024 to May of 2025. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Colton is... So he's he was he, on the podcast, right? So he was, was on, on the youth takeover. He was on the youth takeover yeah. podcast. Youth takeover, so yeah, yeah, so he's he's gone from Word of Life Camp to now he's yeah, actually life going changed on the at Word of Life Camp and yeah, that was actually one of my questions. Was I mean, you had a lot of your youth go to the Word of Life Camp over the yes. summer. So what changes did you notice in them? <laughs> a lot, yeah. actually. There's <laughs> quite a few. I was like, wow, yeah. okay, these are different youth coming back. Um, there's more. Well, there's a whole bunch more of them. And well, yeah, in youth group <laughs> itself, there's a whole bunch more. Yeah, because it seemed like they were encouraged to like invite more friends and. Well, just know? they just started showing up. I oh, mean, okay. They did invite friends, uh, but they just the ones that actually attend both Zion and here just started showing up more mm -hmm. more often. We had about five to eight average mm -hmm. the last year or so we've been here or two, um, and now we have about. 15 to 20 every week mm -hmm. so it, it's really picked up and we're gaining and we hear about more and more people inviting more and more people so mm -hmm. um we're not doing anything extra special as we've just been consistently sharing yeah. the word having a game you know yeah, the structure snacks. hasn't changed no yeah. we've just been ourselves and build relationships and mm -hmm. and they keep coming and they invite their friends and mm -hmm. so we're excited about that we're just a little bit thrown off a little bit still <laughs> yeah because we weren't ready for it and we're like yeah. wow this is Wow, this is more than we had in the past year and a half or two. Yeah. So, um, definitely just growing in the word, their desire to grow in God's word, um, desire to be baptized, their desire to share. I know several of them are sharing their faith with their friends and family, mm -hmm. and and uh, and and it keeps me on target too because I teach some of them in Sunday school, and so they're asking some bigger questions, which I have to dig a little bit deeper mm -hmm. and do some more research where. Then we discuss it, and I ask them to also research and do that too. So mm -hmm. it's a mutual thing. But, yeah, there's definitely growth, and it's a very amazing. And then we're starting up possibly a, a little worship band type worship um, downstairs. Mm. And okay. we've been working a little bit with the uh, college students. We'll come up here and worship with them through singing, mm -hmm. um, like twice, maybe twice a term or semester. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and they enjoy that as well. So they're they're wanting and desiring God, so that's cool. Is that maybe one of the reasons why I think you were driv you were driven towards youth? It's just like they're kind of on this precipice of just like just a whole new life and just being excited about things? Or, or No. No? <laughs> yeah. I think it's, once again, God. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> because I found so many other people saying, I can't do what you do. Uh, that's not my ministry. That's not my thing. Yeah. Um, and God has given me the ability and how I've been given a personality to... Um, interact with students mm -hmm. and just build relationships. And that's, that's my, my main thing, wherever I've been in whatever country, mm -hmm. I've built relationships. I've connected with them. I've listened to them. I've tried to figure out them mm -hmm. and be of, I try to get interested in whatever they do, whether I'm interested or not in that. Mm -hmm. And that starts to build. And then you have opportunities to share the gospel and grow. And then you see the changes and sometimes you won't see the changes for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And that's frustrating some days, but in general, it's just been that consistently in their lives, caring for them, and they slowly, some of them break down their walls very quickly. Mm -hmm. Some of them have to figure you out for a couple of years, <laughs> and then they're like, okay, you. I, I can Hit trust you with you with our more. tortilla wrap, maybe? <laughs> I've been hit several times from youth, <laughs> oh, no. so I don't know. Um, yeah, so they say, was it mockery and other things? That's when you start building relationships. Yeah, yeah. Every country I've been to, India, Zambia, Germany, other places, that's part of somehow quickly they make Your fun of me. Your relationship building. Yeah, somehow they make fun of me. I don't know. You're but I know easy. that I've made it in when they start making fun of me. So. You're like, I've made it. Yes. Yes. So. Oh, that's too funny. One of the things we're excited about as a church, too, and this is you're talking about things you didn't know and just with the youth group. So one of the things that even the elders and I uh, have been recently talking about 
is um, we are very purposely starting to integrate our youth group into the larger body of the church. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've d been doing that for a while as far as, you know, they lead worship on Sunday. They, they run the tech, you know, they do different, different areas of service in the church and we utilize them, but we're actually going to start moving um, any of our youth, especially, you know, the teenage ones who are interested in full membership of the, of the church and like mm -hmm. have them serve on committees and have them and be, oh, be cool. like integrated into the entire. So just kind of going back to that disciple making thing, like we're really going to try to, as a church, make disciples of our youth like full fledged, not you know like. Yeah, you'll get there someday. Yeah, like someday. Thing. No, you're part of this body already. You're, yeah. you know, if you're a born again believer, you are spirit filled. You know, you need to be contributing. You're part of the body, and let's mm -hmm. let's get you working and functioning and realizing your responsibilities and and your place within the body as a whole. Just mm -hmm. to, you know, and it goes back to what you said. One of the parts of discipling is that, you know, passing it down to the whoever is below you you know like you're wherever you're at in your maturity you mm -hmm. know there should be somebody above you who's helping you grow to their level and there should be somebody below you who's helping you're helping to grow to your level and so like we we're even brainstorming like we we're wanting some of our youth to start being teachers in the kids Sunday school being teachers at vacation bible school because mm -hmm. you're mature than the you know, fifth graders, <laughs> you, <laughs> <I> know, <hope. laughs> you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're a junior, so you could contribute to the elementary school kids, you yeah. know, kind of, and we'll contribute to you and, and kind of that whole, and mm -hmm. not waiting till this magic. Oh, now you're an adult. Now you need to be part of the church. <laughs> yeah. you know? So that's some, some of the stuff we're collaborating on as mm -hmm. far as where we're going with, with our youth here. And, and just this whole idea of, this is our discipling time. We need yeah. to be full. They need to be full disciples and not kind of like part-time disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of this word over and over again, disciple, our question we've asked every guest, Jarrett, is what is a disciple? <laughs> Actually, well, I've preached on it. I was trying to think of that because I thought it would be a question. No. <laughs> and uh, my short Honest. version is just being a follower, mm -hmm. uh, follow, going after following and doing what... Um, the leader is doing in a sense, just following after mm -hmm. um, that and growing and not just stagnant or just sticking around and just saying, okay, I've made it. Just yeah. You're always constantly going and growing and f being a follower. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I've looked at it in mm. my life. So, Okay. Um, let's see. We've been skipping around our questions. Oh, okay. Another 3D question. So Jason always, or not always, but at the beginning talked about this metaphor of 3D versus 2D. And he held up like a picture of a football. Yes, I remember that. And then he actually like threw a football into the pews for everyone to kind of understand that. I do remember that. You can yes. play. I think it went over your head. I think. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice pun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't even get it. Okay. So, um, and that there's just very different experiences when you're holding a piece of paper of football versus holding a real one. Yes. Um, so again, we're trying to encourage, you know, our listeners and our church members to be more of like a 3D disciple, something where people out in the world can interact with and get to know Jesus through them. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever caught yourself in life kind of just telling people about Jesus and not being Jesus? Telling people about Jesus yeah. and, and not being Jesus? Yeah, because that was kind of how Jason described it was like, we've spent so long just like telling people about God and who he is and Jesus, but we've not been him in the world. And your question was, <laughs> sorry. I just, how, have you ever caught yourself just kind of being the person who just tells people about him and not being him in the world? Yeah, I, I've, there are several um, experiences throughout my life, mm -hmm. um, maturity wise, just growing as well, where I've, I've tried to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And I think in the sense of when the Holy Spirit's not speaking through me or I'm just trying too hard, I think that's when I'm trying to force them into the kingdom or just trying to force them to learn about Jesus. And instead of actually listening and seeing where they're at and trying to ask those questions, um, and get a little bit more understanding before I even kind of how do I go about that then and how do I share Christ with them instead of, um, I mean, there's certain cases where you do just 
preach to them because mm-hmm. you, you only have a short time. But in general, if you have the opportunity, it's life on life. You share, you talk. Um, I've had growth definitely in the last couple of years here. Um, being out more in the world, let's say, in a different type of world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been out in the world, but in a different world portion mm-hmm. uh, back in the United States. And so readjusting and seeing where they're coming from and how they talk and how they think. And so it's, it's different than other places in the world. So it's a readjustment of how to share Christ yeah. um, in that way. Maybe explaining to uh, Hannah and whoever kind of your other job might help flesh out that what it means to be a 3d jesus because so his only job this isn't his only job he's not he's part-time here and his other job he works at sheets which is a local convenience store gas station you know they kind of (laughs) kind of do it all cook food (laughs) sell gas you know the whole the whole kent caboodle Mm -hmm. thing and so he works there wawa for maybe yeah it's the wawa or the buckies or whatever myers or some other version yeah and so anyway um, and I think he's done a good job of just being Jesus in that place and, mm-hmm. and it's starting to show some some dividends in some ways. Yeah, in some ways. They know I'm a pastor mm-hmm. um, and they know uh, I don't swear or I don't say certain words or think certain things. Uh, I still get frustrated at customers, but I mean, that's <laughs> everyone. Uh, you don't have time to get to know them. What's yeah. going on? <laughs> <laughs> but there's many different lifestyles, many different ideas thoughts that they have yeah and so me working through it's like you're thrown right into it um and you have to adjust and you have to think on the fly we would say uh because they do ask like all of a sudden we're busy and they just have a random question about jesus or about the bible and you're like i only have 15 seconds to share what i think Mm. and then i share a little bit and then i have four customers in front of me waiting to be checked out i'm like i will get back to you on that or it yeah. just gets sidetracked. And, but they do have questions. Some of them are all the way to, hey, what do you do for Lent? <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't really do Lent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, or, hey, I got this new Bible. Where should I go first? Um, or, oh, hey, I'm, I'm struggling with this. Or, hey, I like this music. Or I do this. Or So it's, it's just it's being also real in myself, uh, being just a f- I'm sometimes funny, so uh, I just I'm just you joking. don't just get made fun of. You, there's a I don't get made. Do. I do get made fun of, but yes, <laughs> but I go along with it. We talk about it. We go through a lot of things. Yeah, I know some. I think have been hurt by the church. I can tell by yeah. just how they respond to me in certain ways. But we've had other conversations where it's been a low time, and we've talked about a variety of what's what's in the church. What how do you deal with divorce? How do you deal with certain things? And then. And that's in the low time of maybe five minutes we get to talk about it. And some don't like it, and that's not fair. But I go back and I say, well, that's what God's Word says. I, I'm not saying it, it's God's Word. Mm-hmm. So um, and I try to do it with a kindness and a, and a care, mm-hmm. but understanding that I might get flack and they might look at me angrily or differently. Mm-hmm. But, but a lot of times they, they know I'm a pastor, and they, they still use words and say things that and I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't expect them to like, I'm not God. So yeah, I don't expect them to change in that way. I, I do pray for their changed lives, but you mm-hmm. know, there's, there's opportunities there. And even with customers, sometimes <laughs> when you mm-hmm. you're talking to them here and there, but it definitely has been an eye open experience and <laughs> um, getting me once again, back into the American, it's different in our countries, as I said before. So coming back here and my wife has, I threw in my wife. See, there Woo-hoo. you go. See, go uh, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> so, Team Lou. Uh, and and she's from uh, another country, and so she has to adjust, and she still is adjusting, and yeah. she's been here for four years. So, mm-hmm. just how people respond, how youth respond to her, and words they use, and variety yeah. of things. So, I mean, it's been a challenge for both of us in one way or another, because um, especially when you live elsewhere, yeah. you come back. There's different challenges. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and that's something that I I really like hearing your perspective on on getting to know youth and working with them that it's almost as simple as just give them an opportunity to share their stories Mm -hmm. because you know it's something that i kind of struggle with and maybe there's someone else in the listening or in the church who's like oh well they're just so generationally different and they respond in a way that i would never (laughs) (laughs) um 
But, you know, I think that's a really good piece of advice where, you know, you just try to build those relationships. And His work life that he's describing, that's, that's just a good example of when, of the next of display and deploy. You mm -hmm. know, that whole just going into the world, right? You know, developing a disciple who goes into the world, who shows God's love, and obviously deploy into the world. Mm -hmm. So that's just like being there and loving on the people, you mm -hmm. know, being real with them. And, you know, it does, that opens the door for for gospel conversations, discipleship conversations, you know, um, all kind of conversations sometimes. I think it also, um, in one way, I, I grew up where, I think another positive, and that's maybe not Christian per se, but I think it shows uh, that you, they'll just look at you as a Christian, mm -hmm. not a lazy Christian. So I, I do my work, I'm a yes person, I'm like, whatever you ask me to do, I'll do. Whether I know what I'm doing or not, <laughs> at Sheets, I'm like, yes, I'll, I'll take out the trash, yes, I'll clean up some messes. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I'll clean the windows. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll clean the pumps. I'll do whatever because that's the way I serve one. And also I, I'm not, I'm not that fast in the MTO business. So <laughs> making yeah, the food, making the food, making yeah. the food. Yeah. So made to order, <laughs> made to order right. stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but I'll do whatever, even if they want me to make the food, I'll do that. You don't get asked very often anymore. They put me in different spots yeah. in the food area. So, <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I'm willing to say yes to anything yeah. um, to help them out and to serve. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I'm getting paid, but I, I don't say you no. You could I say want, no, yeah. Or I could just moan about it and complain about it, and I don't do that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully that's... That Bible verse, whatever you do, do it without griping and complaining. Philippians, yes. So. <laughs> I remember that one, 2.14. <laughs> Sounds like you've been quoting that one to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I used to use that for youth as well, because like, they complained all the time. It's like, Philippians 2.14, look that up, yes. And they're like, Everything. Yeah. So we must have a complaining problem if it's in there. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should make, We should get Jason to work there for a little bit. I did. See. You did? You did? Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, yeah, That's how he helped me get my job. Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And your daughter <laughs> works there. Oh, I, yeah. So I, I, I was the first. And then. I and never knew he that. He helped yeah, me because he knew I, the boss. I did overnights there, so. for a, oh. a little over a year. I did mm -hmm. overnights. That's super for, funny. For a while and, you need to tell your sheets and employee, employee friends, like, hey, listen to the podcast. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but I, as they're some of my greatest friends. I, I walk in there mm -hmm. anytime. And, yeah. and like, still, some of the people I worked with are still there. And they're mm -hmm. just like, yeah. You know, and, and philosophically and, and based on faith, you know, we're light years apart. But, yeah. But, you know, I treated them kind. They treated me kind kind they think i'm i mean they i mean they're just great, no. they're great people and yeah. they walk in and they're yeah. just like hi jason now my daughter works there too and yeah. so then, then it's like your dad's here and like, so <laughs> it's, all, it's like fat i mean it's you know that's fun it's really what we want is and what the church needs to do is we get so bothered by people who are so different than us and we've talked about this a number of times and just really accepting people where they are, even if their philosophy and their religious views on life are, you know, 180 degrees different than, than where you're at, you can still love them. You can still mm -hmm. just be loving to them. And, uh, and so have you got a couple more questions? No, I'm uh, running low. So, so, so cause this, on, so yeah. here's, so here's a thought I've had today. <laughs> so you were talking about what disciple is. I got to look up something right fast. Um, do you know what the most expensive metal in the world is? Metal. Yep. Uh, gold, I would guess. No. Platinum. Our director shouted platinum. <laughs> Titanium, she says. Copper. <laughs> it, 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 hang on, I'm looking. Oh, is it something got, that's I, in cell phones? Uh, uh, what the heck's in oh, cell that, phones? Um, no, because unfortunately that's collected. There it you. is. In the vibranium. vibranium. Is that a metal? It is rhodium. Marvel. Rhodium. I feel like, oh, that's a, I just learned about that. That's on my wedding that's ring. That's on your white. It, it that's covers how you make it white, white gold. gold. Yeah. Yeah. So I just so, learned about that. So as of today, uh, rhodium is training is trading at about four thousand five hundred and fifty dollars an ounce. Mm. Uh, gold was only at like two thousand six hundred and thirty dollars an ounce. Yeah. So it's almost twice as expensive as gold. Mm hmm. And, and and I've been working on this illustration, so news flash. <laughs> I think being a disciple, we've we've often talked about the golden rule. 
do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah. That's the golden rule. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a better, more expensive rule. Mm -hmm. The rhodium rule. <laughs> <If> rhodium's <laughs> the most expensive thing. Yeah. And that's do unto others as Christ has done unto you. Yeah. And that's really being a disciple. And, and so this whole idea about, you know, while I was a sinner, Christ loved me. Uh, when I was an enemy of God, Christ made peace with me, with me. While I was rebellious, Christ, you know, came to me. You know, all these things that, you know, so the job of a disciple is to do unto others as Christ has done unto them. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's an even higher step than the golden rule, which is do to you as I want you to do to me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. get me out of the situation like me do to you as Christ did to me. Yeah. And that's way more than what you could you, do. Yeah. yeah. And so, but yeah, so loving these people who are, who are enemies of God, loving these people who are different than you or hate you or, or all these things, all the things that Christ has done to you yeah, do unto them. And, you know, again, uh, that's what opens the doors for these conversations and, and you gain respect. And, and I think, I think in those situations, because I, I can just tell this story from when I worked at sheets. Um, there was a couple of us that worked together who claimed to be Christians and we behaved very differently. <laughs> the two, oh, amongst the, the two or three the, of the, you, the, the two of us, yeah. the three of us, whoever it was yeah. behaved very differently and the the non Christians would say things like, "You, <laughs> be, you know, ha behave like a Christian." I'm not so sure about that because they have this understanding of what's right and wrong. They have this this thing, and so we have to live up. If you know, I, there's a famous saying by Gandhi. Uh, Gandhi says, "I love your Christ, but I hate your Christians." That's one of the mm. quotes he was supposed to say, and it's this whole point that who Christ is and who y'all portray Christ to be, that's great. The problem is all you people who say follow him don't act anything like him. And that's really, there, there's the crux of your 3D disciple is mm -hmm. that that's all the way back to that. And so I, I was just kind of toying with this idea of the golden rule and the rhodium rule. I had to look up what I knew there was something more platinum. is so actually gold, depending on what you look at, could be, could be number three palladium, Rhodium and then gold are actually kind of the orders of the most expensive things. But well, so maybe anyway. next podcast you'll have a rule for palladium. <laughs> so, so anyway, <laughs> that's, bring that's the idea of just so you know the the higher way to live is to do unto others as Christ has done unto you, and yeah. that's kind of my new my new okay. little formula for. I'm sure it'll be in the next edition of the manual. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Jared, did you say you want to say? No, something? I was just saying you said open doors. That actually, my wife and I. Um, uh, there's the gentleman would come to my door on Saturdays uh, last year, and uh, of course he brought a friend, and they were dressed very nicely, and um, Got it. they shared the gospel to me. Uh, but uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. But this gentleman, my wife was home one day, and she said, "Why don't you we schedule a time and you come back with your wife? This is my wife. Thank you, Lakundo, um, <laughs> to come and visit with us, and we want to share, and we both shared, and so they came back in November." Mm -hmm. For two hours, we discussed Jesus Christ because there's a difference mm -hmm. between what they believe and what we believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we set up another time, and we just met with them about two weeks ago. And after about an hour and a half, we had not arguments, but we had disagreements. And once again, Jesus says the foundation um, to build our faith on. Mm -hmm. They have different beliefs. And we left, away, we left them um, an hour and a half, not angry, but we were saddened by they still believe who they believe Jesus is compared to what we believe. Mm -hmm. um, but also we left away not yelling at each other, frustrated. I think it was a good way because a lot of times most Christians, not all, will slam the door in their face or start yelling and start trying to shove it down their throat. Uh, this is the way to go. Uh, we just shared with scripture and they shared their scripture and mm -hmm. we just shared with them saying, this is our heart. We can't change you. Only Holy Spirit can. Mm -hmm. um, but we went away. Hopefully, they took away at least respect for Christians um, and how we responded to them. And it was a civil conversation, even though we believe that they were misled. And they believe that we're misled. Mm -hmm. So, But we ended it not arguing, fighting. Amicably, yeah. Yeah, and so, but we're saddened that they didn't come to know Jesus at that time. So, yeah. um, so we're still praying for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, you wouldn't have... Like you said, people would have slammed the door. Like, you know, I get uncomfortable in that situation. So I don't slam the door, but I'm just like, 
yep, okay, you know, and then, but, you know, that was your opportunity to be a missionary as well. Um, and we kind of answered this question, but I was going to ask, since you and your wife have moved back to U.S. soil, how the both of you deploy, but it seems like you deploy just almost every day and what you guys are well, doing, I feel like just getting uh, back. What I've heard about Lakundo at the school that she works at and whatever else she does, mm-hmm. that she, as I say, oozes Jesus. So <laughs> she doesn't stand back and, and she witnessed to a gentleman that um, the local, um, is it Japanese or um, over here on oh, Main Street? I think Street? it's a mixed Asian fusion, Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure, but she shared the gospel with a guy around yeah. the corner because he was talking, he, be, he believes he's a witch. And uh, mm-hmm. so she shared the gospel with him. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I mean, she's always willing to do that more than I feel like I am sometimes. Yeah. And so she's, she's yeah. a very good influence and push, pushes me to do better. That's, um, it just comes up with another question in that page 118, which I think I gave the wrong page number earlier when I gave the definition of deploy. That's 114, um, is the missionaries. And so that, that mm-hmm. page isn't just reserved for people who <laughs> travel all around the world then, I'm guessing. It's meant for... Because it sounds to me like you and your wife are still missionaries to this day, even yeah. though... I mean, yes, she's in a different soil, but I mean, you're not just deploying all the time. I'm excited to get to these chapters to see how you're going to talk about them. Whoops. <laughs> 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 but um, I definitely... I did want to get into that with you, Jarrett, because I feel like you and your spouse um, both do that extremely Luke, well. We all love- <laughs> We've shouted her out many a time. We all love Lou. <laughs> <laughs> do they know her at Cheats? Do they know that she's your wife when she comes in? Yeah, there's a story that goes behind it, but we don't oh. have to discuss that. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. They make fun of me because I've, yeah. Uh, she stopped by once or twice, so yeah. I was very quick going, why are you here? And then they challenged me like, why are you asking your wife that? And so... <laughs> She's and allowed to like, be here. How did you marry someone so beautiful? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> and poised. Yeah. And, and all that she is. <laughs> we'll have to make a whole separate episode to answer that question. I feel like. <laughs> well, Jerry, <God>. it's been... <laughs> <God>. <laughs> we'll end the conversation like we started. Thank you. God. Yeah. So we really appreciate having you on, hearing thank your you perspective. For yeah, it's been fun. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Our prayer is that you've heard something today that will help you be a better disciple of Jesus Christ. We also want to encourage you to make sure you take your next step in your discipleship journey by considering what it is you would do about what you heard today and then go and do it. Finally, we want to invite you to join us at 1030 on Sundays, either at our Main Street campus in downtown Clarion between Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's or online at fbcclarion.com. God bless.